things worship leaders need to stop doing during church. It's Ishmael N, your priest. Uh, and if you're watching for the very first time, remember to smash that red button on the video below. Smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you're notified every time I put up new videos. So now let's get to the point. Things worship leaders need to stop doing during church. Uh, for example, like, let's start with the first thing. Like, you know, things like uh, making worship all about you as a worship leader or uh, as a worship leader, they need to stop making worship all about them. For worship, it's all about God. It's about leading people. Because sometimes some they worship, they do things so that people can see how how they good they worship. If it's some guys, maybe they feel like they want to attract some women. Um, you feel like you want people to praise you. There's that temptation. So when you're worshiping, make it a point that it's all about the people. To draw people closer to God. To make people also tap in and begin to worship as well so don't make it all about you for example another thing that i can give you is uh looking at the manner where people worship you find that now you start crying and you're still holding the mic you start rolling on the floor those things sometimes they draw attention they draw attention to you and people now they no longer really worship but they get surprised what's going on something they don't understand so try by all means not to make it all about you because I've also seen it myself. Sometimes I would wonder what's going on. Unless, of course, if really the Spirit of God has touched you and you can't help it, then it's okay. But the one thing that I know or I've heard is some people, they do it uh, deliberately. You start worshiping, you just start to go on your knees and you're still holding the mic. Oh God, oh God. And sometimes, if I'm especially to new people who are coming for the very first time, they get surprised. They don't understand those things and hence they stop worshiping. So uh, the second thing that you can look at uh, about worshippers uh, as well is uh, that uh, the thing of uh, when you are worshipping, the type of song, the selection of the songs, make it upon that it's songs which uh, relates with the Bible or you find that they don't uh, correlate, you find that they select the selection of the song, find that it doesn't correlate with the Bible. This is just an example, of course, let me give you an example that I'm talking about. Uh, maybe a song called, uh, there's this song called Jesus Love Has Never Failed Me Yet. That part of yet, I, 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 like, I kind of like the song, but the, when it comes to that part of failed me yet, it makes it seem as if you are expecting that God is going to fail you at any time. So that is not scripturally correct because I think it also shows some, some doubt and an absence of faith when you say yet. It means you're expecting that, huh, maybe you might fail me. You don't really trust. So, besides, of course, this is just a song. Uh, there are some, there, this is just an example. There are so many other songs as well that worship just needs to select carefully. When they're selecting, let it be songs which are publicly correct and uh, which don't, do not cause confusion. And while I'm also still speaking about uh, our songs and all, Make it a point that before you, they, you go into leading people into worship, it's that thing of you explain the, 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 the story behind the song or you explain so that someone can relate, especially when you, you they do not know the songs. Even I might, like I don't know some of the songs when I go to new churches, when I just visit some churches. But I feel like if worship leaders could just, before they start worshiping, explain the story behind maybe for example they'd be like are, are you in a situation where you feel like god is not with you like maybe there are people who have enemies who can just kill you who can be with you you are you are fearful and all then they'd be like but with this song it is to remind you just as it's written in the bible in the scripture psalms blah 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 maybe 91 or 92 God says you're under my wings, he can cover you, you, blah, blah, blah. You get my point. So then you start the song. Cover me, my Lord, under your shelter. You know, such a song. So now someone, when you sing that song, although you don't know it, you know the story behind. And you got to record it. I was so fearful. And now the song is saying, you're following the lyrics, you're following the, as they are leading worship. Oh, cover me, my Lord, under your shelter. You no longer become fearful and you also recall that scripture that was mentioned that indeed the Lord is going to cover me. 
instead of just sing sing and sing sometimes we just are uh, we're just imitating we don't even get what we're worshiping some of the services i was at previously i don't even recall this even sing a single song that i was singing or just following following so that is one thing that worship leaders should uh should watch out for or should uh avoid or make sure that they they do also going back to the first thing that i mentioned about uh making it not don't not make worship all about you or about them for example i've realized that uh even myself included even now i've been a christian for many years now how many years i forgot from i think the day which i surrendered myself exactly it was 2013. no 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 sorry i mean 2003 yeah it was 2003 yeah when i really really but i used to go to church uh, with my mom sunday school and all that's a story for another day of course so yeah i count from 2003 up until now yeah yeah okay anyways back to the main thing yeah let's go back to i uh, i was still talking about that when you go to church when you sing people worship you feel like uh when you see those ladies worshiping and all kneeling down you you, you, you can't help it but like oh wow this lady, she's so serious. It seems like she's too devoted about God or this brother. So at the end of the day, we start looking at you as like role models. Someone, some people whom we look up to automatically, even if you don't, you just have to now remind yourself they are human beings, they are fault. So when you start worshiping, always remember that people now, will, they're going to start also monitoring your life outside of the church because you feel like oh like that is the sister was worshiping or that is the brother was worshiping so automatically you are draw you have drawn attention to yourself so that's why don't force yourself to cry to roll on the floor to do those things so that people see how good of a worshiper you are and so that they can uh, applause you and all no do it because the holy spirit has pushed you and remember the main thing is for you to take those people into worship to lead them into worship because automatically they're gonna start judging you when you do some minor thing to be like even sister so and so we saw her doing this we saw her there and there entering the the club and all and that will be for you you feel like people are judging you they don't understand but you don't get that it's because they saw you in the pulpit and automatically the way you men are built when you see someone at church you feel like they are holy ultimate although you know deep down if you can think deep that they are they also have faults but that's what actually happens in our brains even when that's why i say even as christians we know some people who've been christian for years we know that automatically sometimes you start thinking as someone hey could she be a deep christian could he be that deep and on so it automatically happens like that so be careful of that another thing that you should also look at is uh forcing people to to stand up shout jesus if you love him say i love you don't force people to do things when you're in there as a leader because some people they're entering there for the first time at least explain to them when they are worshiping you know when you stand up when you raise your hands you are showing surrender you're showing god this and that that's it. so understand that when you worship while standing up or when you worship while raising your hands or when you are kneeling down it's a sign of one two three so because some um, people there they are, they are coming for the first for the first time and they are not comfortable they're still shy they can't raise their hands it's like that i remember even myself and when i started uh going to church regularly uh at first it was, i was kind of shy to raise my hands and all those so uh be aware that some people to them is not as easy as that so at least explain don't make them feel uncomfortable don't make it seem like if you're not raising your hands it shows that you're not serious you're playing God. Some, they end up feeling like, you know what? I think I am not sick. Look at I can't even raise my hands. So worship leaders must watch out for that. So yeah, I hope uh, you liked today's video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. You share with your loved ones. And uh, there is a red button on the bottom of this video. Make sure you subscribe. You smash that subscribe button. And also hit that notification bell so that you're notified every time. I upload new videos like this. And as for me, Ishmael and your priest, I will see you next time.